Okay, so let's move to the second lecture. The second prof uh, speaker is a Professor Yoon Jong Ho from uh, Kyunghee University. I briefly introduce her biography. The Professor Ho received her BS and uh, Master degrees in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Biosystems from uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, KAIST, in 2004 and 2006. After that, she moved to the University of Tokyo Mechano Informatics for pursuing her PhD degrees. At that time, I was a postdoc, so that means uh, we are a lab mate at the time. So after getting her PhD degree, she began to her postdoctoral work with Professor Takeuchi at the University of Tokyo in 2009. Then she moved to the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology as an associate professor in 2013. Since 2016, she has started her laboratory at Kyunghee University and being focused on designing implantable micro devices for continuous health monitoring and disease treatment. Uh, she has also stayed for two weeks in our group. So actually, uh, today is uh, her last day in KO, so he, she will come back the, uh, on Saturday. Anyway, so we would like to welcome her invited lecture. So Professor Ho, could you start your presentation? Thank you, Thank you for a kind introduction. I'm really glad to be here and give you, um, get really good opportunity to give you a presentation at KO University. So I want to start from introduction of uh, Kyunghee University, uh, where I'm working on, uh, working in. So when I decided to transfer to Kyunghee University, uh, my former boss asked me a question. So do you know the Chinese characters of uh, Kyunghee University? And I didn't know that. So I uh, Googled it. <laughs> so this is a... Chinese letters of Kyunghee uh, University, and we shared one Chinese character, I found it. So, there are many notable alumni of Kyunghee uh, University. So, most of famous uh, person right now, alumni right now, maybe President of the Republic of Korea, Jae Moon, and also uh, Former President Dejun Kim graduated from uh, from Kyunghee University uh, to get master degree. And overall introduction, uh, Kyunghee University is uh, established in 1949, one year before Korean War. And we have a main uh, three main campus: Seoul Global, which is placed in Suwon and Gangneung. So uh, the College of Engineering is placed in Global Campus. So it takes one hour from Seoul. Anyway, we have a lot of departments, as you can see here. And also, we are running graduate school, as you can see here. And we have over 1,400 full-time professors. So about the rankings, uh, Kyunghee University continues uh, to increase the reputation in the international academia, as you can see in the uh, graph. And also, it is one of the best private university in Korea. And uh, also, it is a really famous of a beautiful campus. So if you have uh, any chance to, any opportunity to come to Korea, please visit the campus of uh, Kyung University. You can find this kind of very beautiful buildings in the campus. And also, we have a lot of college of schools, as you can see here. And the spectrum is really wide. Here, you can find a school of dance as well. So in, uh, in the colleges, I belong to College of Engineering, of course. So I'm from the de Department of Mechanical Engineering. So in College of Engineering, there are nine departments, including Department of Mechanical Engineering. So now I belong to Mechanical Engineering, so I want to briefly introduce the department. So it is one of the oldest department at Kyunghee University. And also, as you can see here, there is a um, student 
activity, extracurriculum student activity to make handmade cars. So maybe at Keio University, uh, you, you guys have the same uh, activities, right? Uh, and also, we have uh, 26 faculty members, as you can see here. So in undergrads, undergraduate school, we have um, um, more students, like uh, about 900 students. And in graduate, graduate, uh, stu uh, graduate students is about 60 right now. So mainly, we have uh, three uh, categories of research fields including dynamics and control, thermal fluid engineering, and materials and manufacturing. So I'm working on between fluid engineering and materials and manufacturing. So I asked to, ask to my colleagues to send me the research, research introduction slides. So then you can be a representative professor at Kyung University. So two, I got two research introduction slides from Professor Chung Yeom Lee at first. So here, they are working on the fluid dynamics. So they want to reduce the drag between fluid and surface. So to uh, reach the goal, they employed super hydrophobic surface, as you can see here. So uh, by making micro nano structures at the super uh, hydrophobic surface, then they can keep the gases here and they can reduce the drag of a fluid. But the problem, as a time passes, maybe gas disappears, right? So they introduced the electrolysis method to keep gas here. Uh, at the, at the, between the micro and nano structures, for example. Uh, they can generate the gases between pulse. So from here. And then finally, they can have a de-wetted surface. And also, Another example is on micrograde grades. So again, by electrolysis, they can generate the gases, and then they can fill the oil gas between the gaps of uh, micro nano structures. And then finally, they can have a de wetted surfaces. Okay, finish it. So next one is a drop impact on super hydrophobic meshes. So it is believed that superhydrophobic stick can help repelling the impacting water drops, but the influence of a superhydrophobic city on the penetration resistance is not well known. So they are uh, studying on this research. So they find uh, some difference between hydrophobic surface and superhydrophobic surface. And they also figure out the uh, velocity drop velocity and then make a different phenomenon just like this. So without penetration, and there is some reco recoil penetration under the, under the mass, as you can see here, and sometimes pen impact penetration with recoil penetration occurs. And another research is about contact electrification. So it is uh, called uh, tribal electricity. So there is a contact and detach, detachment of a solid, 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 solid surfaces, then charge generates. So Professor Dong Yi Che found that there is a contact and detachment of a liquid and solid surfaces then also charge generates just like this. And also she, uh, he found this kind of a repelling between the drumlet inside of the water because uh, there is a contact electrification at pipette inner surface. So he wanna use this phenomenon to 
sensing concentrate, some analyte concentration in the solution, or also um, if we repeat the contact and detachment of a liquid and liquid and um, liquid and solid surface, and then we can generate uh, charges as well. So he want to harvest energy in the same way. And then uh, also he made this kind of a flexible tank device, and then this is kind of a uh, self-harvesting device. So if we, he, uh, when he applied uh, 30 microliter water on the tank device, then he can generate the charge, and you can see the, the LED turning on here. So these kind of uh, researches are work, uh, right now conducting at the depart our department. So I want to move on to my research. So first one is about implantable sensor for continuous glucose monitoring. The older research it was conducted at University of Tokyo. So what is diabetes? Everyone knows maybe. So diabetic patients cannot control uh, their uh, blood sugar level in their body. So they have to prick their fingertip and know the blood glucose level and treat the, some, take, the, take the, some drugs or inject insulin, right? So it is a global pandemic. There are a lot of patients. So that is one person in 11. So to manage diabetes, as I told you before, uh, diabetic patients have to check their uh, blood glucose concentration by finger pricking, just like this. And then when the blood glucose concentration is high, they have to get some injection, I mean the insulin. Or when the blood glucose concentration is low, then they have to get some sugar to increase the blood glucose level. Why they have to maintain blood glucose level in normal range because low or high blood glucose concentration episode continue and then it is easy to get diabetic complications. So these are major diabetic complications and they all can decrease the quality of lives. So right now, people with diabetes pre their fingertip and get sample, blood sample, and then put the blood sample on the strip of a glucose sensor. And then they can understand the blood glucose concentration. And it is painful, of course, so it cannot conduct like more than six times a day. So like this. But there can be the low or high blood glucose concentration, right? And then they, if, if you, it occurs and they cannot um, treat the, uh, against the, the blood glucose. So we have to fill between the gap, right? Then there is a requirement to, to develop implantable sensor for continuous glucose monitoring. If we implant a glucose sensor in our bodies, and then the sensor can monitor glucose, uh, glucose level all the time, even when you know, we are sleeping even when we are doing sports, right? So we need uh, implantable sensors. But usually, commercial sensors use glucose oxidase, so enzyme electrode. But I use the glucose responsive monomer based on boronic acid. So with, uh, without glucose, fluorescence intensity is low. But with the glucose, as you can see here, fluorescence intensity increases. So depending on fluorescence intensity, we can understand the blood glucose. This mechanism is reversible, not like a glucose oxidase. And also, this mechanism does not need any reagent or enzyme. So we can apply this, uh, this uh, sensor to long-term in vivo monitoring. But how to implant this sensor into our bodies? We need some solid support. To immobilize the sensor to solid support, we add a PEG to increase the sensitivity, and also this is a polymerization site. Then we can 
immobilize the, this sensor to polyacrylamide hydrogel. But what types of uh, shape is good? Of course, minimally invasive and easy to, easy to implant, so injectable, right? So I chose fluorescent hydrogel microbees. So if we immobilize a fluorescent dye in hydrogel microbees, and then when glucose concentration is high, then glucose can be detected by fluorescent dye, and then it glows. And the size is one, about 100 micrometer, so we can put them into strings, and they can pass through the, mic through the needles, as you can see here. And then they can detect glucose concentration in tissue fluid, and fluorescent intensity can pass through skin. And then we can detect the fluorescent intensity, intensity outside of our bodies. We implant them under the mouse ear skin, and it glows very well. But the problem, we cannot find them after a month. But I told you I want to develop, I wanted to develop long-term continuous glucose monitoring sensors, right? So there is a requirement, right? First one, the sensors have to be, uh, have to stay in an implantation site for a long period. And second one, we have to enhance biocompatibility because sometimes we found there is a rejection from, our, from the mouse bodies. So we need to, we needed to increase biocompatibility. So second generation sensor was fluorescent microfiber. So fiber shape can be injectable, and they can, uh, the shape is, uh, shape can stay long inside of uh, the body, and also it is uh, easy to move, remove. So we can decrease the side, side effects of uh, remaining fibers uh, after use, right? And also we uh, chemically immobilize a PG additionally, then we can enhance uh, by a compatibility inside of a sensor. Then we cut the uh, fiber, it's like a five millimeter long, and implant it under the skin of a mouse ear again. Here, here is a sensor. And with the excitation light, it can glow through the skin very well. And if we detect the fluorescent intensity transdermally, and then we can understand the blood glucose levels. So I checked the long-term application. So after 140 days, we conducted this, um, this experiment. So we increased blood glucose concentration and decreased the blood glucose concentration. So it is the, what is that? Gray, gray dots indicates blood glucose concentration. And then red line indicates fluorescence intensity. As you can see here, fluorescence intensity can well follow change of blood glucose concentrations. So it means that we succeeded long-term in vivo monitoring. So, what kind of sensor can be the third generation? So, at first, I, we developed microbees, and then we cannot use them uh, for a long period. And then we changed the shape from microbees to fibers, but we still need a surgery. So, maybe a second generation sensor need to be needed to remove a surgery requirement. So maybe microneedles can be candidate for the solutions. So microneedles can apply with less, um, less pain, as you can see here, because this is a, the conventional Shrenzi needle, it's big. But these are microneedles. So usually um, diameter of hairs is 100 micrometer, but this size is a one to 200 micrometers, so it is very small, so maybe it is not that painful. But how to make it? So I'm working 
on MEMS related field, so I use the photolithography. So in conventional MEMS uh, technique, uh, there is a multi-directional UV exposure to fabricate 3D structures as, as you can see here. So the conventional way is uh, exposing UV, UV light like this, on right. But if we tilted the UV right, light rays, and then we can have a three-dimensional structure, as you can see here. So we employed inclined rotated UV lithography to make cone-like structures. So if we bake a photo resist on photo mask, as you can see here, so yellow one is the opening site. Then we inclined the sample and rotated it under the UV light. And then the UV intensity is high at this portion, cone-like shape portion. So then finally the cured portion can be a micro needle. So we can make this kind of, a, uh, we can make a micro needles with a high throughput if we use um, photolithography, just like this. So, in summary, fabrication of a micro needle array using inclined rotated UV lithography uh, is good because a cone like a 3D distribution of a UV exposed portion with a high aspect ratio and sharp tip, as you can see here. And also, the fabrication method is scalable. So, if we control inclined angle and then we can control height. And also, if we control exposure dose, then we can control the volume of micro needles. So, uh, in detail, uh, there is an inclined angle just like this. Then, height is determined by radius of mask pattern R, of course, and an inclined angle just like this. And also, uh, I want to skip the older theory call experiment explanation because it is uh, quite difficult and then this kind of uh, uh, we can have uh, this kind of a UV exposure ratio distribution here so it means uh, if we decrease the exposure dose and then you we can cure this this size of a micro needle but if we increase the exposure dose and uh, we can have a fat micro needle um, following the federal line here. So fabrication process is very simple. The patterning photo mask at first and the bake, the photo resist on the photo mask and conduct inclined, inclined rotated photo lithography just like this. And then finally, we can, after development process, we can have a micro needle array. This is an actual experimental setup. And then we can have uh, this kind of uh, large array of micro needles. If we enlarge a micro needle, then we can find there is a very sharp tip, right? And then the radius curvature at the tip is very small. It's smaller than 20 micrometer. So it is known to be penetrating the skin. And also, I already told you this method is scalable, so we can control the size and volume. For example, if we want to apply the micro needles into the drug delivery, then we need longer micro needles with a height of about 900 micrometers. And then we can control inclined angle just like 7.5 degree, and then we have to optimize the UV exposure dose to make this uh, sharp micro needles. And then we can apply them to drug delivery system. On the other hand, if we want to apply micro needles to cosmetic applications, then we don't need a long micro needles. We need a short micro needles, like with a height of 200 micrometers. So in that case, we have to increase the inclined angle to 22.5 20, 20, degree. And also, to make micro needles sharp, we have to optimize UV exposure dose. So all micro needles are made uh, using 
using negative fertilizers, SU8, but we want to make a uh, biocompatible, more higher biocompatible microneedles. So we uh, employed PGDA, but the problem, PGDA solution is a cross solution, right? So we cannot put them on the inclined table. So we employed the prism here. So PGDA solution is a, under the, uh, is placed under, under the photo mask, and then we put the prism on the photo mask. And then if we rotate the prism, and then we can have inclined it, rotated photo lithography again, then we can have a PGDA microneedles just like this. And also, if we reverse the photo mask, then we can have a PGDA microneedles. Of course, the mechanism uh, is a little, a little bit different from this one, but uh, this is an ongoing project, so I will uh, tell you the details in other uh, chance. Okay, so there is a time. So I wanna move to the project three, nano emulsions for erectile dysfunction treatment. So nano sized emulsion can pass through the skin barrier. Uh, for example, micro size cannot pass through the skin barrier, but nano size can pass through the skin barrier. That's why the nano emulsion is used in cosmetic applications. But we use the uh, nano emulsion to erectile dysfunction treatment because there are a lot of patients suffering from erectile ED and also uh, the, right now the society is becoming Aging, aging society, so this is a quite serious problem. So, the mechanism of a, uh, erection is just like this. If there is a trigger materials, nitric oxide, and then GTP is becoming CGMP, then the, uh, then the artery is, how can I say, the dilation of artery occurs, and also smooth smooth cell relaxes. Then uh, the, the size of a penis can increase just like this. But CGMP level can be decreased because of PDE5. So uh, there is uh, some medicine to inhibit PDE fiber to treat ED. So the famous one is Viagra, as you can see here. And also there is an uh, injection uh, treatment, just like this. But drug application can affect the whole body, right? So some patients cannot get uh, oral, oral drug just like this. And also, injection is so painful, so it is not a uh, so comfortable way to treat the ED. So there have to be non-invasive, painless, safe method, right? So how to uh, reach this goal? It, is, it has to be non-invasive and transdermal, and the treatment has to be local, and uh, because PD, P, PDE fiber inhibitor is not working for some patients, so we have to trigger using nitric oxide. So we employ nano emulsion because they can pass through the skin barrier, right? So inside of a nano emulsion, if we load the triggering materials, and then we can um, we can deliver the treating material drugs uh, transdermally. So we have uh, two hypotheses uh, from the previous publication, of course. So nano emulsion have been widely used in cosmetic applications because their surface area per unit volume is larger than micro size of the emulsion. So it is effective. And also it can pass through the uh, skin barrier just like this. So maybe if we can decrease the size of nano emulsion under 10 nanometer, and then we can uh, apply the nano emulsion to ED treatment. That is uh, our assumption. So we conducted uh, two experiments. The so first one, uh, we found a condition to form nano emulsions. 
So we optimize the concentration of NaN2, and also we uh, found uh, optimum HL, HLB, and also we checked the ratio of surfactant to oil and water. And also we uh, use two types of surfactants, as you can see here. And also I use the oil, we use the oil, vitamin E oil. This is a body oil, which is a commercial. And two, from nanoemulsion, we applied sonication. And then we made a nanoemulsion. We moved it to in vivo test using dogs, beagle dogs, for beagle dogs. The AG is equivalent to two middle age of humans. So, and then we spread the nano immersion on canine penis, and we evaluated it based on three parameters listed in here. So, at first, we check the uh, nitro, uh, nitric oxide concentration. So, we use the NaNO2 solution. So uh, depending on NaNO2 solution uh, concentration, we check the nitri nitric oxide concentration, as you can see here. Then we found that uh, we can have the highest NO concentration at 800 millimole NaNO2 solution. So we chose this concentration. And then we optimized the HLB. HLB is a hydrophilic and lipophilic balance, as you can see here. So uh, we found that the smallest size can be obtained at uh, 7.0 HLB. So then we uh, also found the conditions of smallest nanoemulsion formation based on some ratios of surfactant oil to water. So, as you can see here, you can find the very small emulsion size here. So we can obtain the, the very small size of the nano emulsion at this condition. So surfactant uh, concentration is 1.5% and the ratio of vitamin E oil to NaNO2 solution is a 6.4. So in this uh, condition, we can make uh, nanoemulsion with uh, under 10 nanometers. So we chose this condition. Then we applied nanoemulsion to uh, in vivo test. So uh, in in vivo test, we uh, obtained this and these graphs. So. Uh, we uh, found that nano emulsion can, can increase 15% uh, in diameter after, after application. And also, um, uh, how can I say, the readiness also increases to 25%. It means uh, the artery dilation occurs and the smooth muscle, uh, smooth muscle relaxation occurs. It means that we can um, trigger, trigger erection in dog studies. Some, but some people uh, ask me, ask us a question, is the, this situation is a f uh, originated from the N nitric oxide or another parameters. So we check the blood concentration, uh, we check the nitric oxide concentration in blood. Uh, so after application of a nano immersion without nitric oxide, concentration of a blood nitric oxide is almost the same with a normal condition. But after application of a nano immersion with a nitric oxide, concentration of a blood uh, nitric oxide is, uh, nitric oxide increases to three times uh, than control. So it means we succeeded to, uh, succeeded that uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to initiate the ED using our nano emergency system. So in summary, in our lab, we are uh, developing several micro devices uh, to help people with uh, diabetes. So we ultimately 
aim to help them. So to, uh, by apply, by developing the smart sensors, uh, including implantable sensors, uh, they are all ongoing projects. Uh, so if we uh, can, if we can develop all these uh, these platforms and smart sensors, and then and then we can increase the safety, uh, safety and quality of lives of diabetic diabetic patients. If we uh, this kind of uh, smart sensor system can be embedded into ubiquitous healthcare system then uh, people can have a healthy life even in daily, uh, daily lives. So this, uh, I'm, I would like to thank for funding source and my lab members and former lab members and collaborators. And thank you for listening and I welcome any question from you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Fo, on uh, your unique uh, research and applications. So the uh, lecture is now open to the audience. So uh, is there any questions or comments? So thank you very much for your impressive talk. And uh, in particular, I'm really impressed for, uh, for the how, how to fabricate the needle array. And I have a question. Uh, so, uh, so you. Uh, fabricate a needle array directly to the like mask substrate, or you have something, some layer between the needle array and mask, and uh, yeah. Okay, so we have we made a filler mask by patterning aluminum layer at first on glass slide. And then we um, spin coat, suet a little bit, and then half of cured. It works like a glue between photo mask and thick photo resist layer. So, and then we stack the thick photo resist layer on the glue layer, and then if we cure, uh, through the photo mask, then we can have micro needles. So, uh, is it difficult to transfer the needle array to the the substrate? A any substrate you want to use? Oh yes, this that is a really good question because if we apply them practically, and then we need a flexible substrate, right? So, in this case, we use a glass substrate, but we can um, we can have a uh, we can use uh, another flexible substrate, just like a perylene. And then we can, uh, in the same way, we can pattern aluminum layer as a photo mask, and then stack the photo resist, just like this, and then we can have a micro needles arrays on flexible substrate. That is a better way. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for your nice talk. So I don't know how three questions, so can I ask quickly because in the first one, so you um, apply like uh, to determine glucose, but how can you like if you want to apply into the real life, how can you create the UV light to determine the um, so the yes, uh, yeah glucose? Yes, that is a really good question. Uh, um, Because in this in this study we use the fluorescent microscope, so we cannot bring the fluorescent microscope all the time, right? So we need another very small size of the detector, right? So uh, uh, in the formal lab, um, we made this kind of very small size of the detector system. So it includes LED and photodiode inside. So then using this system, we can detect the fluorescence intensity very well. So if we made this kind of things very small in, with uh, the integrated electrical circuit, then we can have a small detector on, on the skin. So the second question is because you created the needles very small. So do you like create a capillary inside a needle in for injectable? 
don't. Um, I, I don't okay, know. you mean so the, I, I couldn't understand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. There are several types of microneedles actually. So uh, in that case, we call that kind of microneedle hollow microneedles. So it is difficult to flow drugs, as you pointed out, uh, uh, through the very small pores, right? So sometimes we need a very special design to use them. Or um, actually in commercialized product, they uh, employ the uh, biodegradable microneedles. So microneedle is a draw as itself. So if we apply microneedles under the skin, then the needle dis disappears. It's like a candy. Yes, then it is easy to apply drugs, deliver drugs under the skin. And so for the, the last one, because I, for the last uh, project, so you use, uh, I don't know, like you use uh, ni ni nitrogen uh, oxide? Yes. But uh, in your research, you use uh, sodium nit nitrite. So how can you create, uh, how, how can you change from nitrite to nitrogen oxide? Yes, yes uh, the details uh, is uh, written in the research article I, because I cannot remember very well. But you can check my publication in scientific reports. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, so the uh, time is up, so let's thank again for uh, both speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.